Tigers did to the Giants in the prelim final. A near capacity MCG crowd for Richmond's do or die clash with the GWS Giants was one of the most one sided in memory. The Tigers started the better. Early goals getting the Richmond faithful up and about. Handball over the top. Lambert, how's that start from the Tigers? Under 30 seconds for the first goal. You couldn't write the script any better for the Tigers. Hard footy to be won in the contest. This is Williams getting it out to Cornelio. Awkward bounce to the straw. Here comes Dusty again. Just muscled his way past Cornelio. Free kick's been played. Advantage has been called and the mark's been taken. And Caddy, a chance to make it two goals inside the first two minutes for the Tigers. And a shape up in the Stevie J manner. That is a perfect ball. Two quick goals to start the prelim for the Tigers. And while the Giants rallied, it was Richmond who took a slender lead into the first break. Loads up, Dusty on the lead, Dusty on the chest, the fumble, and then the mark. Plays on, goes to the goal square, Caddy holds up. Campbell over the top now, Castagna the goal. They lead by six points. Typical of preliminary finals in recent years, the contest was fierce as both sides battled for momentum in the second term. The Rioli name and the big stage go hand in hand and Daniel didn't disappoint as he imposed himself on the game. Look right off the boot. After leading by just one point at half time, the Tigers turned the game on its head in the third term with a six goals to one burst, putting them 31 points up at three-quarter time. Rioli for his third, for his third. He's got the name and he's got the finish. Now Griggs going to pick it up, flicks it out to Lambert, kick the first goal of the game. Aaron Hamble, hard runs on board. Townsend can kick a goal and a couple in a row for the Tigers. With Alex Rance and David Asprey controlling the defensive 50, the Richmond midfield ran riot. With Dion Prestia, Kane Lambert and Trent Cotchin standouts. Look at Cotchin! Look at the captain! The toughest tiger of them all! Kicks to the 50, Rioli at the back, Butler got in his road. Still a chance now, Edwards handball forward, Shaw coming the other way. And when Dustin Martin added a third goal in a row, a little more than a minute into the final term, the game was effectively over. Dusty! Dusty! The Tiger Army didn't need a final siren to start singing the song, with further goals to Jack Revolt and Dan Butler seeing celebrations begin early. Incredibly, Richmond was into its first grand final in 35 years after a 36-point triumph. The Tigers are in the grand final! Can you believe it? I can't! But they are! Yes, just some special comments towards the end of that game from none other than Matthew Richardson getting excited. First grand final appearance in 35 years and 120 minutes away from potentially another famous Richmond Premiership Cup. I've got to say, before I come to you, Alex, they're a loyal bunch, the Tiger Army, and they went nuts. Yeah, they did. And they deserved it, Schwatter. Yeah. Gee, they've supported this club for a long, long time. Since 1980, they'd waited 37 years to get into a grand final. They turn up week after week. They spend their hard-earned money on memberships and they keep turning up. Mm. And that will never happen again, I believe, what happened in that prelim. 95,000, 92,000 of one team. Incredible. It won't happen again. And that support had to have helped the team, you know, in those last quarters when they were trying to win the game. Yeah, Mick Malloy, I think, might be still celebrating. Do you feel the energy <laughs> as a Richmond player with the army behind you? You can't help but not. 100%. As much as you've got uh, mental training where you want to shut out all the distractions, 
we got so much energy, especially in that Geelong game. It was their home game, and mm. they were getting booed as they were coming on the ground. Mm. Uh, not that I endorse booing, but <laughs> and then in the GWS game, they, they looked like security guards, the GWS supporters, yeah. because they got their fluoro orange on. They looked like here, you want a Mars bar, you want a Coke, and there's all our supporters all around them. So it was, um, oh, it was phenomenal. Yeah, it certainly was. Well, the Rioli name is famous. Morris Rioli, he's a Richmond great, Norm Smith medalist. Uh, Cyril Rioli has done it all with Hawthorne. The new Rioli announced himself with a great finals performance, Richo. And he was very good all year. Daniel Rioli just doing what the famous Rioli name has done through the decades. Yeah, it was nice to see him get some real, you know, scoreboard impact. You know, he'd been kicking his one, two goals in a lot of games this year and he was out there to, to apply a lot of pressure as well probably the best pressure player in the competition when you have a look at it but I love seeing him get a little bag of goals and getting on the end of it Rancy that was perhaps his best game for the year with the scoreboard impact and it was just great to see Rioli uh, lighting up September. He can do some scary good things yeah. and I think we saw that with Cyril early days when he was sort of still filling out his jumper, like Dan's still filling out his jumper but yeah. you can just see well, we're in for some pretty exciting times in the, in the future. Mm. There was one worrying incident that came out of the game and that involved the captain. As a teammate, were you worried about potentially the skipper, Trent Cotchin, missing the grand final? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because I'm not <laughs> criticising the match review panel, but because there are so many grey areas involved with what the impact was and whether it was his intent and things like that, which are uh, points of opinion rather than actual uh, facts, that's what made me nervous. And, um, yeah, I didn't particularly want to be tossing the coin in the grand final. Look, I guess when you look at that, and we know there were a lot of variables going mm. into it, he'd had the two fines and... I don't know how the match review panel works. I'm not smart enough to I'm know. I'm not sure any yeah. of us know. Do you know, yeah. Alex? No, uh, yeah, no comment. I know that they've got... <laughs> there's, just, there's just a lot for them to weigh up. Yeah. That's a tough job. But I just think if you have a look at that incident, if he was rubbed out for that for a grand final, I think it would have been a bad look for our game the fabric of our game and, and what it's all about and going hard at the footy and, and trying to win the ball in a competitive ball sport. I thought it would have been a horrible look for our game. Yeah. The best comment that I heard for the year about the match review panel came from Jimmy Bartel. Yeah. Non-football events. That's football. Yeah. Mm. Trent, mm. Uh, Trent and uh, Dylan Shield are going straight for the ball. Yeah. That's football. Yeah. If you're throwing hands around and you know, yeah. I do that every now and then so it's a bit stupid but yeah. you know, jumper punching, that's not football. So understandably that's a fine and potentially suspension but yeah. that's football. You don't want to yeah. see people rubbing for that. Yeah. yeah, no, it's certainly a grey area. What wasn't grey was on Monday night of Grand Final Week, Dustin Martin capped off a stellar year.